Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining my channel. I want to today introduce you to a an old collection from Textures and this is the Mandala collection or Remarkable Mandalas. Uh, now this is a collection that actually launched a year ago so it's one year old so it's its first anniversary and that's why I'm celebrating by showing you the collection again in case you missed it, in case you're new to my channel. Um, but also Craft Stash have offered uh, for a few days only a massive 30% off of what stock is left. I know there's not a huge amount of some of these, um, but what is left, they've offered 30% off at the moment. And that's across all the items within the Remarkable Mandalas collection. So if you follow the links down in the description, that will take you to these both in the UK and on the US site as well. So for wherever you are in the world, you can shop on one of those um, and your discount will be automatically applied. So uh, you don't need to worry about a code or anything like that. If you're spending over £30 in the UK on Craft Stash, you'll get free delivery to the UK. But if you are over in the US, you spend over $80, you'll get free shipping as well. So that's the housework over and done with. So let's now look at what's included in this collection. So I'll run through this very, very quickly and show you some of the examples and then we'll make a card. Now I've got these really pretty colors that we're going to be using. So you know I love my Distress inks and my blending. So we're going to be using those along with some of the mandalas. I'm going to be snipping into some of these as well and showing you, we'll probably get through maybe two cards um, today in this video, but I'll try and keep it as short and sweet for you so you can get on with uh, your crafting or whatever you're doing today. So the first and what I consider the main die in this collection is the um, mandala panel die. Now this is a large die. Well I say it's large, it's A5. It will fit through uh, your die cutting machines. So I've got to the side here, I've got my um, big shot, just the average size big, big shot that's kind of a UK A5 size um, and that will fit in there. But if you've got a larger pl plate machine it's going to be perfect because then you can do the twisting that I always recommend you do with large dies. There's a lot of detail in here but I've never found a problem with it cutting at all it's absolutely beautiful so let's just show you a few of the examples what you can be making with these now it is an a5 size die so of course you can be doing a5 cards now i've not put sentiments on these because i want you to just see them for what they are for the backgrounds uh, for the focal point but you can put your own sentiments and such on them of course you can add florals or snip into them whatever so for this one i've used different colors and i've paper pieced colors back in so i've cut it from a white a teal and two different pinks there and just laid that up so that's completely flat so if you do prefer your smaller cards so maybe you are uh, overseas and postage is quite expensive when you've got a thick heavy cards this is going to be ideal you can see it's one layer but it's all paper pieced back in I had great fun doing that uh, on the other side of the scale, we've got one that's definitely not flat. So I'll try to hide that, hold that so you can see the dimension in it. Uh, lots and lots of layers there, lots of foam tape and layers used to beautiful blues. This is going to be perfect for Christmas cards because it's got that kind of snowflake look. But basically I cut this from lots of different blues and white as well and snipped into them. So I've snipped the circle mandala out from the panel and then I've cut away areas as well. I'm going to be doing something similar to this in a demonstration a little bit later in this video. So um, keep watching or save the video to come back and watch later if you don't have time right now, but I'll show you how I snip into those panels. And here's another one. Well, basically this is partly some of the areas that have been snipped away from this one used on another card here. So different colors there with the pinks as well. Perfect for birthdays. This is going to be ideal for any celebration honestly whether it's new baby wedding anniversary birthday christmas i've got a christmas card i'll show you in a little while as well um ideal so that is the panel die like i say that the kind of the hero item of this collection next in line this is the layered mandalas die set now i love layering that's what textures is all about building up texture again you don't have to be heavy on the thickness of this to make this concept work it is three dies I'll just grab these for you so you can see the size so you've got your more solid one so your outline there then you've got the just some of the areas cut away and then you've got the detail mandala now I find I use this one a lot on its own but when you team it with the other two you've got really beautiful colors coming through you can got your three tone and then of course if you put a solid color behind all of this you've got a fourth color as well so let's just take a quick look at some of the cards that you can be creating using this. Now look at this, this is flat. This is 
again completely flat um, it's three layers of cardstock and then the fourth layer behind so you have got your four colors in there isn't that just beautiful so we've got the lime green and the pinks and the teals or the mint green in there too I love that I think that is such a quick and easy card beautiful effects now this one is the opposite so this is a lot of layers a lot of depth but it still looks beautiful perfect for um, a man if you want to do your masculine cards something like that um, look at that look at the depth in this and you've got your colors through so you've got your dark gray in there then you've got your black right underneath as well and you can just see through those layers and then this one's using just two of the layers so you can see I haven't used the more solid mandala I've used the first two panels here the gold with the navy blue is just stunning this actually came from my um, Jack Frost collection the chipboard or the grey board that was in there this is the border stamp set I'm going to show you those in just a little while um, but yeah really really beautiful and here's a concept I don't need to show you two of those but here's a concept that I've created using this particular die just using this one here so the one with all the detail in you can create a really pretty gatefold now of course you can do that with any of these and then layer up on top but doesn't that just look stunning as like a lace effect so that is on a six by six inch card base um, I created the gatefold from it and then I just simply cut and snipped away the frame um, really really pretty I love that and I will try and get a video done showing you how I do that type of card as well so that's the layered mandala die set then we've got a few other items I'll quickly show you we've got those borders as I said to you in that uh, that other card we had the border so these are just going to work perfectly alongside all of your die cuts or on their own equally absolutely if you love scrapbooking and things like that they're going to create one for borders they are repeatable shapes this one's a little bit messy so I've got some examples to show you now these are my layering mandala stamps so they are elements of mandalas instead of one big one so you can see the centers are missing and such from them uh, this allows you to create multicolor, multi-dimensional mandalas I've got them here I used embossing powders can you see how you layer up the different shapes so you've got smaller elements and larger elements for each one and they fit inside each other beautifully you can mix and match many of them too so you can choose your colors for each of the layers of the mandala so this is gold um, platinum bronze and silver embossing powder a few sequins in there as well again not adding a sentiment to that one I just wanted the that to shine through how gorgeous is that that would look lovely for something like a New Year's Eve party invitation even again Christmas card if you want to do that all in white it would look stunning and then here I've gone really heavy with the colour. So my favourite colour blend. So you've got pinks, purples and teals in here. But then I've also added gold. You can just see that in the light there. Gold embossing on some of the layers. One layer on each of the mandalas uh, to match in with the sentiment there in gold too. So again, completely flat. You're not actually layering as such. You're just adding different colors in different stages. So they are the mandala stamps. And then lastly, just to complete this collection, we also have a paper pack, which has got some beautiful A5 mandala papers in there as well. These are just absolutely stunning. And then we have stencils. Now these are alphabet stencils. I find these so, so helpful. They don't have too many mandala images in them. You do have one sheet here with a few mandalas in the stencil so you can add to them. But essentially they are an alphabet stencil set and you're going, they're a really good size. You're going to find you use them time and time again. Now, the idea was that we would stamp through using the mandala stamps would stamp through these to create mandala style alphabets uh, but I find actually just for ink blending through them so you get an ombre effect letter for your crafting absolutely perfect for sentiments for large words for um, initials and things like that they're ideal so although they are part of the mandala collection they are not necessarily um, specifically for mandalas you can use them with anything Okay, so I think that's shown you everything. What I'm going to do now is create, because that's what you're here for, to see the inspiration. So we're going to make a card, like I say, using uh, a color blend that I absolutely love, greens, purples, blues, 
I'm going to look at the largest, so the, the die here, that's the panel die. And rather than working, as you can see here, I've worked on square cards, I've worked on large A5 cards. Maybe if you're, perhaps you're over in the US and you do smaller cards, perhaps you just prefer a smaller card. Um, let's work on this one. So this one is, I wanna say it's five by seven. I don't actually have a ruler to hand because I've covered up my grid mat so it doesn't strobe on the camera. Um, but this is still going to work equally. Now I have gone ahead already and I've cut these. So I've got one from white and I've also got one from black because I will show you what the black looks like as well before I stick the white down. Um, but you can see they just cut beautifully. I've actually managed to in storage, just tear a little bit of that. But once it's all gl glued down, it will be fine. And as you can see, you can just pop it over whatever card size you're using and just trim the edges so it will fit on here. I mean, look at that, just white on white. How beautiful is that for something like a wedding invitation? Maybe you can pop a bit of gold behind there or just a simple sentiment on top. It's going to look stunning. So a really beautiful pattern design. And then again, the black, just the monochrome. That is striking, isn't it? So let's pop those to the side for now because the first thing we need to do is do this ink blending. So I'm going to go around my card with a washi tape. Um, now I have loads of washi tapes and to be honest I use very few of them for actually for, <laughs> actually for um, washi tape as you should use them. I use so so many of them um, more for masking because they are the perfect tape. Now I'm just going to straighten this one up a little bit. There we go. I'm going to go all the way around the edges of these. Um, it's a shame this one's such a wide tape. I feel like I'm wasting a lot of it. But I will quickly just speed this up for you while I go around the edge with this and then we'll get into the blending. There we go, so I have my edges all sealed in. Now these are the colours that I've chosen. I tend to go with kind of through the rainbow when I'm deciding what order to put my colours into. So green feeds nicely into blues, which um, then feels nicely, feeds nicely into purple. In fact, these are the wrong way round because this is more of a teal. It's got some green in it, so that works perfectly that way. Almost kind of thinking maybe Halloween colours there, perhaps if you took out uh, the turquoise maybe. Um, let's start. Now you can do this with the um, mandalas. You have the option of blending top to bottom, left to right, diagonally, but you could also, if you wanted to, um, blend from the centre outwards. That's another option for you. I'm just going to go um, top to bottom, so I'm actually going to switch these round. There we go, because I feel like the darker colour should always be at the bottom, make it heavier at the bottom, so that's the, the purple. So starting from the top with the Twisted Citron. Now I'm using Distress Oxides and I love Distress Oxides. Um, they're definitely my favourite between the Oxides and the Inks. I just think they're creamier, they're juicier, they blend nicely um, and yeah, I just think they're a deeper, more saturated colour. So I'm going to go around almost a third, just over a quarter of the card there with a nice thick colour. Then I'm going to salvage patina and this one will take us just over the halfway mark because I don't, I want to make sure I've got room to blend each of my colours so I'm not just doing it in the space that it needs to be in. Sometimes if you find like me, the bristles on my brush might get a little bit dry and almost crispy um, and that does affect the blending. I'm finding it with this one at the moment. It doesn't, the, the ink doesn't quite blend as well when that happens. It may be that they just need a little bit of a wash, some warm soapy water and then leave them to air dry um, and that usually combats that. It might just be that something's got on them um, that's caused that to happen. So I'm just going to go back over that join line between the two with the a Twisted Citron. I'm not going to be putting any more of the colour on there, just using what's already on there to blend the two in. Then moving to Broken China, a lovely blue, a really lovely bright blue. See, this is quite similar to the Salvage Patina. It's just a little more blue than having that green tinge. So I won't be doing too much of this, but it's just a nice transition between the blue and the purple to so that you don't have that kind of green hint in there going straight into purple because green and purple don't always mix beautifully well. 
you're better off sticking to colours that are reasonably close within the rainbow or the colour wheel if you want a nice blend. And lastly, in with our purple here. So nice deep colour. They're beautiful. So I put the heavy colour on the white cardstock there, make sure that's nicely saturated. And then I start to bring that up into the blue just with what's left on there. I'm not going to apply too much more unless I feel I need it. Bring that up into the blue a little bit. So I do need to start pressing down a little bit harder, always working in circles to get every little bit of grain of the cardstock. There we go. I don't think I've got any more purple ink on there. So I'm just going to come back with my broken china and just smooth out the transition line there with the blue as well. Perfect, okay, I'm happy with that. If you're not happy with your blending, um, you can keep going over it, you can build up the color, or you can um, spritz it with a little bit of water. It will allow some speckles to come through, um, which is really pretty, but it'll also hide imperfections. So now what we need to do is very carefully remove our washi tape. So I do this slowly, but it's the most satisfying part of any ink blending project. This is the bit I, I could just do this all day. I mean, look how stunning that crisp line is. Don't forget which order you put your tape down in as well, because of course it will affect whether or not you can actually lift up the edges. See another perfect line just bring this up from this side it's starting to peel ever so slightly we oh I didn't I did bring this one first there we go make sure you fold your tape back on itself as well that allows for a cleaner lift off and less likely to pull those fibers let's come back here folding that back and lift up there to prevent that from peeling away. There's a little bit of peel there. We're going to be putting our mandala die cut over the top of this anyway. And then the same at the top here, nice and gently. Definitely worth taking your time here. Don't try to rush it. You'll thank me if you take your time and get a beautiful, perfect peel. Okay, so now I did want to show you what it would look like with the black over the top. I mean, beautiful, absolutely stunning, isn't it? Can you imagine that? Just the full panel behind there on a square card. How gorgeous is that? Really, really pretty. Uh, that's the reason I brought in that black. But today we are talking about this one. So I'm just going to place that on there. How pretty so so pretty now I want to make sure that this mandala absolutely perfectly sits on that colored panel so I've got two options I can either place that on and then I can cut myself another frame or I can do it the way that I'm going to do it and um, just trim this down whilst it's kind of in situ so I'm going to take a repositionable glue so I've got this one from crafters companion Oops, just the nozzle came off there. And I'm just going to give this a little bit of a spritz on the back. Just taking it off aside from the camera just so I can spray that. Not a lot, just a tiny little bit. And I'm going to position this where I'd like it to be. Looking at the top and bottom, making sure they are even. Making sure everything is nice and central. The great thing is you can reposition this so you can keep going in if you want to okay now what I'm going to do is take myself I do need a ruler and a pencil now you'd think a crafter would find it much easier to find a ruler and a pencil uh, I'm just going to place my ruler along the side there of that line and just gently mark with a pencil just on the die cut there very very lightly so I can see where I need to cut I'm going to leave the top and bottom for now. They won't be too, too much trimming to do there, if any. And then the same on this side as well. So just gently mark that. Try not to get any pencil line at all on the background there. I think this one, I've placed that a little bit higher up, which isn't an issue. 
but I am just going to trim the top of this off as well and just see if anything at the bottom needs to come off. Uh, not really, maybe a sliver, maybe just straighten that edge. Okay, so now I can take this away again. You can see I've got no pencil lines on there whatsoever. And you can do this two ways. You can either take um, a trimmer and go along this. I prefer not to do a trimmer because if you catch an area with your trimmer blade by accident and tug it, you're just going to ruin everything. So I prefer to do this with some scissors or you can use a ruler and you can use um, a craft knife and do it that way. So I'm just going to go along. As long as you've marked all the areas, you should be able to easily trim a nice straight line because you're just snipping into each of the lines in one straight swoop there and one more there. Okay, pretty quiet. Now there's one little bit that just flicked off so I will need to find that and it might be that one actually. We'll see, it could be that piece and use that. So just be wary of any pieces that do come away. I think that one only came away because that had broken previously. As I said, I caught it earlier and it broke. So there's me going quiet, little snips. There we go. Couple more. One, two, three. And then I'm just going to look at the top and the bottom now this one is where there was just a slither to trim away. Probably not even worth doing really, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist. And then here, there's, obviously had it a little bit higher up than it was lower down. Okay, so I've got that piece there. Now, let's pop some glue on the back of this, just ensure all the pieces from the cut have been removed. I think they have. Now I've got a fine tip applicator. Again, I think this is a crafter's companion. The glue inside will be either Cosmic Shimmer um, glue or it will be Sizzix Express glue. So either one of those two, or everything's linked down below anyway. There we go, so my glue's added. I now need to carefully place this back onto the panel. There we go, beautiful. Make sure any pieces that are kind of moving about, just make sure that they are straight and where they should be. Stunning. So the only other piece I have is here. Now this could be any one of two pieces. It could be this piece. No, it's not, not long enough. Could be got a feeling it actually <laughs> got a feeling it's no it's not that one either it did go walkabouts it did get flicked off so I'm just going to have a quick look and make sure that I can't see it ah, ha 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 here we go it flicked off into my tub beside me look at that perfect okay fine tip applicator let's just pop that in how pretty though How pretty is this card? Absolutely stunning. Takes no time at all to create. You can do it in any color blend you want to. Really, really easy if you want to batch make as well. So, so pretty. There we go, okay. So there's the first card. As I said, you can, of course, add your own sentiment to it, whichever you want. If you wanted to then die cut through the center of this and have an aperture, a circle aperture, that would be a beautiful frame around the outside as well. That would be gorgeous. But let's take another quick look at um, these, all these pieces that I've cut from, <laughs> lots of pieces from this panel die set. I, like I say, I will do other videos and they will include um, the other die sets as well in this set but I just want to show you these very quickly now let's take another shape of card let's do a DL card double length so a little bit like a slim line the first thing we need to do is decide what is going to be our base our base panel now some of these I've already cut into I've snipped into so let's use let's use the dark darker blue I think as the base color and let's decide where is this going to go. Is it going to be central or is it going to be 
could be like so, couldn't it? That would look lovely actually, because then you've got the frame around the outside. So let's do that. Let's stick this one down. I'm going to use a slightly larger one for this. So slightly bigger glue because the frame is larger. Now I'm not planning this one yet. I haven't planned anything. I'm just going to go with it, start snipping pieces and see, see where we end up see what we can create in a short space of time really with a lot of off cuts as well because some of these have been trimmed out and used from other projects and you can do that too so when you cut anything away for from your mandalas once you snip into them you can of course be using the excess that you've cut away too so there we go pop that now being a dl card of course you could use it vertically as i am here or you can equally use it horizontally, so it's up to you. So once that's there, I'm going to take my scissors, trim this down. Now you don't have to trim it all down now, you can trim it, trim all the layers later if you want to, but I like to keep things nice and neat and see where I'm heading with it. There we go, so I'll keep this because it might make, you know, that would make a lovely uh, part of a bookmark or something like that. So next color, now I really love this color here that we've got I'm going to cut away the frame but I really do like um, this lime green so I'm going to just trim around the frame shape let's just go from here do you know what let's actually let's make this easier for us and let's just trim these little pips I'll show you what we're getting in a minute. We've got so many shapes within these mandalas that you can cut into and cut away. Uh, that doesn't really matter because that's going to be, we're not going to be using that part. We're just going to be using this circle here. Okay, one more here. Now, this one it kind of goes, so I'm just going to do a kind of wiggly line technical term but just to give the effect there we go so that is going to sit on there let's glue that one down as I say we are making this up as we go along so I'm sure it will look fantastic there we go let me know in the comments as well uh, what sort of colorways you think would look amazing with this die set or any of the mandalas um, obviously bringing in mirror cards they are beautiful as well now I'm going to slightly stagger this I'm going to ever so slightly bring it slightly to the left just so that you can still see the blue that's underneath it gives it a bit more dimension can you see that shadow in there look already coming to life now what else have we got so I've got a bright blue here that I could use um, I've got this is a pretty color. That is a really pretty color. Now with these, every time you cut a layer as well, you don't have to use it directly over the top. You could, for, so this one, for example, you could twist that and you could use it slightly turned. I might do that. Let's leave that there for a moment. Um, I wanted to possibly bring in, do I want to bring in pink? Do I want to do similar sort of colors to what we did in the last card? That's pretty, but then the blues, just the blues on their own. Do you know what? No, I think the pink does look good. Now, I think if I'm going to do this, let's put that directly on where it should be. And I'm wondering whether we can actually bring in the pink, that center flower there, but instead of having it how it should be, which is like that, twisting it just once, just slightly some of the areas line up still but some don't and then you've got that blue showing through there as well yeah I like that so let's do that let's put this one on straight so this has already been snipped into all of these excess pieces left over from projects that I've done in the past put this one on just like this you can do this with just blacks, whites and greys if you wanted to. I mean, that on its own is a really pretty card, isn't it? You don't even have to bring in lots of different colours if you don't want to. 
And do you know what, actually? Oh, well, I'm, I'm now doubting myself. Do I put that on there in its entirety or do I snip? I think I'm just going to snip into it once more and snip this centerpiece away. So it's not a full pink piece. And we still have that navy blue from the outside frame coming into the centre and that will bring it all together. There we go. So twist that like so. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so again, one, two, three, four, five, around the outside two, the tips. That's really where you should be using a fine tip applicator. Pop that on there. Lovely. Now I'm going to turn this over and trim everything again. Cut through all the layers. So this is much easier when you only have a few layers. You don't want to let them build up too much. I've got pieces there. Again, keep everything. Look at that. So we have another card. Now that is really quite flat. Again, both of these cards are quite flat so you don't have to worry too much about the postage this one will work absolutely perfectly as a horizontal card if that's what you wish or vertically i mean to be honest the same with this one too you could have it either way how pretty are those so that is an overview of the textures mandala collection that's uh, all the different stamps and dies and such um, i didn't get chance to show you too much of these sets so let me just very very quickly run through I did say I had a Christmas one for you and that's this one so this is a glitter green and then we have a gold and as you put the gold over the top you can see you've got a little bit of the green coming through and then you come in with a red and you've got your red gold and green that looks beautifully Christmassy let's just see if we can do that just like so and then with white behind that is going to look really beautiful as well then if you want something that's a bit frosty you can use that like so really pretty um, pinks as well if you love your pinks so let's do purple on the blue look at that oh we've got another color here so purple on the pink you can see how you can have so much fun with these all the different colors and such and then the blue underneath just peeking through gorgeous so i haven't shown you too much of the collection just little bits uh, really my favorite bits uh, there will be other videos up very soon but if you want to know where you can purchase any of these the links will be in the description below if you like this video i'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you have thank you so so much for supporting me and I will be back very, very soon. Don't forget, until the 7th of October, this collection has 30% off everything at Craftstash. That's both craftstash.co.uk and craftstash.us. Um, I'll see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.